Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show that makes big winners out of the lowest scorers. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Lawrence and this is my auntie Heather and we're from Sussex. Couple number two. Hi, Xander. I'm Lynn. This is my husband, Graham, and we're from Whiteleaf near Croydon. Couple number three. Hello, my name is Steve. This is my brother-in-law, Pete. I'm from Hertfordshire. Pete's from Surrey. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Kevin. This is my dad, Hugh, and we're from Madrosan in Scotland. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks very much, all of you. Lovely to have you all here. Warm welcome to the show. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. A hitman here to take out our team's hopes and dreams in that order. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Uh... Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, good show last time. Two pairs returning uh, from that. Hugh and Kevin, welcome back. Got knocked out in round one. Fingers crossed we'll see a little bit more of you today. And Lawrence and Heather on podium one got knocked out in round two. And Neil and Charlie went on and played in the, uh, yeah. the jackpot round. How did they do? Well, they had a round on Mary Poppins, the old Mary Poppins movie, the new Mary Poppins movie, and the Saving Mr Banks, which is a very good film. And they got a one-point answer. <sighs> Ah. Yeah. But what about this lovely crew? Yeah, it's a oh. nice gang, yeah. yeah. Lots of what newcomers. Lots yeah. of newcomers. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, very good. Yeah. Shall I...? Uh... Yeah, shall we? Oh, OK. I'm going to just tell them something that you've kind of already okay. told them. Because that's, that's just what I have to do. Yeah, that's OK. Uh, now, Neil and Charlie didn't win the jackpot last time, so today we're going to add another £1,000 to it. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,000. There we are. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. All you have to remember is the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. So best of luck keeping those scores nice and low. Our first category this afternoon is travel and communication. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Transport on Royal Mail stamps. Richard. On each board to start today's show, we're going to show you seven clues to uh, types of transport that are featured on an official Royal Mail stamp. You just have to tell us what those forms of transport were, please. There's going to be 14 in all to have a go at home. Wow. Going to be fun. OK, let's reveal our first board of seven clues to types of transport. And here they are. The Victorian tea clipper that is now open as a visitor attraction in Greenwich, CS. The steam locomotive that ran between London and Edinburgh and was the first in the UK to reach 100 miles an hour, FS. The class of Royal Navy submarine that houses Trident, the UK's strategic nuclear deterrent, V. RAF plane used in World War I and named in part after a desert mammal, SC. Early design of bicycle named after two coins of the time, PF. The name of the yacht in which Sir Francis Chichester completed his solo voyage around the world, GM, and the iron steamship designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel that is now a museum ship in Bristol, GB. I'll read those clues one more time. The Victorian tea clipper that's now open as a visitor attraction in Greenwich, the steam locomotive that ran between London and Edinburgh and was the first in the UK to reach 100 miles an hour, the class of Royal Navy submarine that houses Trident, the UK's strategic nuclear deterrent, RAF plane used in World War I and named in part after a desert mammal, early design of bicycle named after two coins of the time, the name of the yacht in which Sir Francis Chichester completed his solo voyage around the world, and the iron steamship designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel that is now a museum ship in Bristol. Heather, welcome back to Pointless. Good to have you with us again. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Heather. Um, I retired six years ago. Um, I loved my work, but it's very good being retired as well. Remind us what your work was. Uh, I was a careers counsellor at the university. See, that must have been quite fun. It was good. I helped them you helped find what they wanted to do. Helping people find what they wanted to do. <laughs> um, did people ever come back and say, thank you so much for yeah. sorting me out? It was all, it was cans perfect. of lager and things sometimes. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Yeah, a bunch oh, of flowers. A bouquet once. of lager. Yeah. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> did they just come in with a can of lager and drink it in front of you? No. And say, thank you so much. No, for... they were left as presents for me. That is lovely. Um, Heather, our board of modes of transport featured on, on stamps. OK. What are you Transport. thinking about that? I know quite a few of them. And I'm going to go ever so slightly risky. Good. I can't believe I'm even saying that, poor Lawrence. I'm going to go the RAF plane, Sopwith Camel. 
Sop with camel, says Heather. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. Ah, 29! <laughs> A can of supermarket-owned brand lager for Heather. Yeah, part of the RAF centenary presentation pack of stamps. But that's the thing you have to do on that podium one. So many people think they've just got to get an answer on the board. Actually, you've mm. got to go as risky as you would do on any other podium. It's exactly the right. You knew it was a sop with camel, really. And in any other place, sitting at home, you'd have been shouting out sop with camel. Um, you used to have a metal sort of protective plate over the guns, which uh, looked like a hump. That so was the camel. They started calling it the camel. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now, Lynn, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Lynn. Hi, um, I'm a freelance medical editor um, when I need to earn some money. And the reason I want to earn some money is so I can go to Bruce Springsteen concerts around the world. So... You fund your Springsteen thing by being a freelance medical editor. And hopefully oh. coming on Pointless as well. And coming <laughs> on Pointless. That's just, there's so much to unpack there, Lynn. So being a freelance medical editor means what? Um, it's, it's getting sort of medical texts from sort of clinicians and so on right. and writing it so that it's understandable perhaps to, to non-specialists and, and to the public in some cases. Presumably that means you've got to keep your medical hand in as well. You've got to... Yeah, I try. I mean, I'm not medically qualified, but right. I, there's a lot of information out there, so... Good stuff. And it gets you to see the boss, so yeah. that's nice. Uh, Lynn, our board here, what are you going to go for? Um, yeah, I think I'll go for the name of the yacht, um, Sir Francis Chichester, as the Gypsy Moth. The Gypsy Moth, says Lynn. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Gypsy Moth. It's right, 29 is the only score we have at the moment, and you pass it. Down it goes to 17. Very well done indeed, Lynn. 17 for Gypsy Moth. Yeah, a special stamp uh, released in 1967. It was bought by the United Kingdom Sailing Academy. Uh, to do up, and they bought it from the Greenwich Maritime Trust for one pound and a gin and tonic. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice. Thank you. It's very, that's a very sort of yachty way to behave, isn't it? Yes, and yes. I suppose it was Sir Francis Chichester's favourite drink as well. Ah, oh, nice. That's good. Thank you. Uh, Steve, welcome. Welcome. Sandra. Tell us all about yourself, Steve. Um, yeah, I'm uh, retired now. Sandra. I used to be in um, sales and marketing. Um, I had a packaging company selling cardboard boxes and tapes and bags and things like that. What did you do with the cardboard box company? Um, I sold it. Well... <laughs> did you sell it just before the uh, online retail explosion? Yes, yes, well before that. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, and then afterwards I went into um, soccer coaching with, with my father, who used to be a professional footballer, so... Who is your dad? Cliff Jones. Cliff Jones. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. See, that's Ooh. exciting. That is exciting. He played for us a couple of seasons, didn't he? He did, yeah. He yeah. came one season. It was a bit of a disaster. I was going to say, it wasn't his glory years, but uh, no. I, hope, <laughs> I hope we didn't tarnish his reputation too much. One of the greatest players that the English leagues have seen, Cliff Jones. There you are. Won the, I, I, he won the double, right? Yes! That's right, yes. 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 Exciting. Yeah. Applause on your dad's behalf. I should there. point out he won the double with Spurs, not with Fulham. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, so, what, you went into soccer coaching. Are you still so involved no, no, in soccer no, coaching? Um, no, no, no. My father's 84 now, so he's, um, he still works at Spurs on match days, but he's, he's running around um, chasing after the children. It's finished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Now, Steve, we are looking for these five remaining modes of transport. Yeah, I'll probably go for the last one on the theme, the steamship designed by Isabard Kin and Brunel as the Great Britain. The Great Britain says, Steve, let's see how many of our 100 people knew the Great Britain. It's right. 29 the high score, 17 the low, 28 for SS Great Britain. Yeah, part of the 1969 British Ships Collection. Um, you can go and see the SS Great Britain and mm. you can get in free. You get in free if you can prove to them that your name is Isambard. <laughs> that's, that's good, isn't it? That's good. Yeah. How many people a year get in free? I don't know. It can't be can't. that many, can it? I've never heard a single other human being called Isambard. It's a good name, though. Is he as good for short? Yeah, it's good. Bardi. Bardo. Ambo. Bardo. Yeah, Izzo. Yeah. <laughs> King Do. Isbo. Nah, it's less good. OK. It just yeah. sounds a bit like a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sounds, sounds like a restraining order for someone very posh from Surrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I have an isbo. <laughs> uh, Kevin, welcome back. Yeah. Oh, dear, it was round one last time. 
Shocker. It didn't end well for you, I'm afraid. That one, remind us all about yourself, Kevin. Uh, I'm a firefighter from uh, Adros, and I've just moved to a, a, a local station, but I worked in Glasgow for seven years. OK, you just moved to the new station? Yeah. Do they do it all differently there, or is it exactly the same? It is a bit different. It's more rural, so it's, like, more dealing with wildfires and stuff instead of, like, high-rises, so... It was like being a trainee going back, so it's starting to get used to it again. OK, well, are you teaching them some of the more sophisticated ways of the city? Mm. The city ladder? Aye, wee bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> no going, Oh, thank you, Kevin, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> we didn't know that. What, you, you turn it on like that? <laughs> <laughs> Take your word for it. Uh, Kevin, this is your board. Do yep. you fancy going through it and filling in all those blanks for us? No, really. I knew three. One of them's away. Um, I think I'm going to go for the second one. The steam locomotive that ran between London and Edinburgh, and I'm going to say the Flying Scotsman. Flying Scotsman, says Kevin. Sounds so much better in Kevin's accent. Yeah, yeah, it? that's amazing. <laughs> uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said the Flying Scotsman. It's right. 62 for the Flying Scotsman. Yeah, it was, uh, it was stranded in the United States for four years, the Flying Scotsman. Got How'd it get there? I know, right? Well, Under the sea? Well, it does fly. Ah. <laughs> uh, no, stranded for you, some guy took it over there to promote tourism. He went bust and then it was stuck over there till uh, they raised the money to bring it back. Shall we fill in the rest of this board? Some yes. very good answers here. The best answer is still up on the board, which we will get to, but the top answer is... Cutty Sock. Cutty Sock, which would have scored you 47. The bicycle... It's penny Farthing. Penny Farthing. That would have scored That's 90. A big, one. That's a yes. big old score. And the best answer, the, this class of submarine. The Vanguard. It is class. the Vanguard. It's the best answer as well. Very well done if you said Vanguard, seven points. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> well. Wow. We are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Well done, Lynn. 17, the lowest score of the pass. Uh, then up to 28, we'll find Stephen Pete. Very well done. 29, Heather and Lawrence. 62, Kevin and Hugh. Now, Hugh. You cannot leave at the end of the first round again. That's not going to happen. So we need a nice low score. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more clues to types of transport up on the board. They've all featured on Royal Mail stamps. And we have got the classic model of bus that was first used in London in February 1956. R. Fighter plane that was designed by R.J. Mitchell and fought in the Battle of Britain, SS. The British car manufacturer who produced the Silver Ghost and the Silver Spirit, RR. The ship in which Ernest Shackleton and his crew were trapped in ice off the coast of the South Pole, E. The ship that carried the pilgrims from England to Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1620, M. The crossing from Folkestone to France that was opened by Queen Elizabeth II and François Mitterrand in 1994, CT. And the classic small car designed by Alec Isagonis and launched by the British Motor Corporation in 1959, M. I'll read those all again. The classic model of bus that was first used in London in February 1956. Fighter plane that was designed by R.J. Mitchell and fought in the Battle of Britain. The British car manufacturer who produced the Silver Ghost and the Silver Spirit. The ship in which Ernest Shackleton and his crew were trapped in ice off the coast of the South Pole. The ship that carried the pilgrims from England to Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1620. The crossing from Folkestone to France that was opened by Queen Elizabeth II and François Mitterrand in 1994. And the classic small car designed by Alec Isagonis and launched by the British Motor Corporation in 1959. Hugh... Welcome back. Thank Good you. to have you back on Pointless. Uh, remind us all about yourself. Yes, yeah, 62 years of age, uh, retired now for five years. Was a firefighter for 30 years prior to that. Were you a firefighter in Glasgow exclusively or did you no, move around like Kevin? Throughout uh, the region, the Strathclyde region at that time it was. And is that up to you or are you posted to it? Posted there. Right. Some promotions move you from area to area or within departments of the, the fire service. And do you have to move house correspondingly or can you...? Sometimes it happens that yeah. way, but I, I tended to travel so that it, it kept a level base for the kids at school, etc. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, Hugh, you were on 62, you are the high scorers, so remember, we need a nice low score from you. Uh, have you found something on that board Do you think that'll get you into the next round? There's a few there, and it's just deciding which is mm -hmm. going to be the lowest. So I think we'll go for the fighter plane designed by Mitchell, the Supermarine Spitfire. The Supermarine Spitfire, says Hugh. No red line for you, you're currently the high scorers. Let's see how many people said Supermarine Spitfire. It's right. That goes down to 35. 97, your total. That's a very good answer, Hugh. Well done. Yeah, everyone knows Spitfire, but not everyone knows it's Supermarine Spitfire. Mm. Thank you very much, Richard.
Uh, Pete, welcome. Hello. Tell us all about yourself, Pete. Uh, a bit of a theme running here. I'm a retired firefighter. <laughs> yeah. Have That's you been... three in a row. It seems to be a thing. Have you, you been do. swapping tips? <laughs> the, uh... I didn't know till just now. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice. Stories you can tell. Oh, yeah. Oh. When did you retire from firefighting? Uh, 2013. Right, you are. And how is retirement? Love Pete? it. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. What sort of things do you get up to? Um, I like to travel a bit and then sort of go for some off the wall things that I can find. To go do. on, give us some off the wall things you've done. Uh, I went to Tokyo last year. Very and nice. And ended up dressing up as Super Mario and riding a go-kart around the streets of Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Was this a bet? No, it? it's no? just something you can do in Tokyo. <laughs> That's fine. And fun. why wouldn't you? And why wouldn't you? Good for you, Pete. <laughs> anyway, 28 is your score at the moment. If you can score 68 or less, round two is yours. Uh, well, being part of history myself, I like to go for the historical question, which is the ship that carried the pilgrims, and I believe that was called the Mayflower. The Mayflower, says Pete. Here is your red line. Can you get below this red line with Mayflower? Let's find out. That's uh, right. And you are through to round two. Very well done. 55, <laughs> taking your total up to 83. Well played, Pete. Uh, yeah, some of the notable people who were said to be direct descendants of people who were sailed on the Mayflower. Um, the Bushes, George and George, Clint Eastwood and Marilyn Monroe. That's nice. Yeah, that's what they say. How many people were on the Mayflower? There were 102 passengers on the Mayflower. 74 men, 28 women. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Graham. Welcome to Pointless. Tell Thank us all you. about yourself, Graham. Uh, well, the first thing is I'm not a firefighter, <laughs> so uh, unlike, but I am a teacher, and I teach science. My interests mainly include things like sport, hockey, cricket, things like that. Very nice. Also, occasionally, probably starts fires as well, which is great because <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> provides provides employment for you guys. That's how the economy should work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we do have Bunsen burners, and we also do have a bizarrely in our Bunsen burner laboratory. We have uh, the sprinkler system as well. So when you turn your Bunsens on. <laughs> You could always get a shower at the same time. Has that happened? It's not Many happened in my lessons, okay. but I have heard about it happen. OK, now, Graham, 17 is your score. 79 is your target. There's the board. All of these answers have been featured on Royal Mail stamps, but what are these modes of transport? Uh, yeah, there's still one or two that I know, so I'm, I'm going to go for the top one, which is the Route Master. The Route Master. OK, here is your red line. Can we get below that red line with Route Master? Let's find out. Route master's right, and through you go. Very well done. Down to 19, taking your total up to 36. Part of the British Design Classics collection from 2009. Thank you very much indeed. Now, uh, Lawrence, welcome Hello. back. Remind us all about yourself, Lawrence. Uh, I'm a teacher from Sussex, as I said. I'm married with two young girls who you didn't name-check last time. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. And what I will names? be in trouble. They are Lara and Sophie. Lara and Sophie. Lara and Sophie. Hi. I tell you, somebody who didn't nature them, Lawrence. You. No, I, <laughs> I did. I did. I definitely did. Did you? Did yeah. you? If you look back. Did he? <laughs> was it? I remember. Now I remember you saying Lara and Thingy. That's what I, remember. <laughs> I remembered you saying it. Yeah. Oh, now I'm in trouble with someone else as well. Yeah. Okay. Now, Lawrence, 29 means your target score is 67 or less. This board's all yours, Lawrence. Okay. Fill them in. So the third one down, I think, is Rolls-Royce, the car manufacturer. The other car manufacturer at the bottom is Mini, I think. Uh, the one above that is Channel Tunnel, but I think all three of those have the potential to score quite highly. So I'm going to go for the other one that I'm not 100% sure on. The ship, I think, is called the Endeavour. The Endeavour. The Endeavour. I think everybody slightly thinks it's called the Endeavour, and they're quite <laughs> relieved that you said what they're slightly thinking. <laughs> Certainly, Aunt Heather gave it a little nod. Here is your red line. Can you get below this red line? Or were we just thinking of Morse? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get below that red line with Endeavour? Let's find out. No! We were just thinking of Morse! No! Oh! 100 points. Takes your total up to 129. I mean, everyone's sitting at home nodding out. Yep, yep, Endeavour. Endeavour. Yep. That's the one. It's not that was James Cook's ship. Oh. This one is Endurance. Ah, oh. oh. appropriate. And I'll tell you how many people thought it was Endeavour. Endurance scored two points. <gasps> of our 100 people, two people said Endurance. 30 people said Endeavour. There we are. Um, now, the British car manufacturer was Rolls-Royce. Would have scored you too many points. 
would have scored you 89. You're right about the other car, that was the Mini. Would have scored you just too many points as well, would have scored 69. But the Channel Tunnel would have seen you through to the next no. round, so it would have scored 66. Ah, oh, there we are. Thank you very much, Richard. Which means we're at the end of our first round, which means, Lawrence and Heather, I'm so sorry, we've got to say goodbye to you. I'm sorry, it's been lovely having you here. It's been lovely being um, here. Yeah. You could always just put on some, <laughs> some disguises and come back in the next oh, show no, as Tony and Marilyn. Um, <laughs> Clubby Marilyn. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's been lovely having you on. Thank you so much, Lawrence and Heather. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. Well, here we are in round two. What can we say about that last round? Well, the big news, Hugh and Kevin, lovely to have you with us. Round two, fabulous work there. Lynn, lowest individual scorer. In fact, uh, Lynn and Graham, our lowest combined scorers. Steve and Pete, keep up the good work. Uh, best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is Sporting Losers. You can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many football teams that have lost over 100 Premier League games as they could. Richard. Yeah, from the very beginning of the English Premier League in 1992-93 up to the 18-19 season, 34 men's football teams have lost 100 or more games. Can you name any of those teams, please? Thank you very much indeed. So, Graham. Graham, is this going to be a guess? I mean, I guess it's going to be a guess for anyone. It is going to be a guess. Uh, is it going to be a, a, an informed guess? Yeah, I'm happy. I've made a decision. I'm going for Everton. Everton says Graham. Everton. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. Down it goes to 39. Good, solid answer there. 39 for Everton. Yeah, you know what? They've actually lost the most, 365. That makes them sound bad, but they've only lost the most because they've been in that division the entire time. So it's, uh, it sort of swings and roundabouts. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Steve. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to think. There's quite obviously quite a few names that uh, I could give. Thinking, I'm going to say Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace says Steve. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace is right. 39 is the only score we have at the moment. You pass it. Down it goes to 19. <laughs> Solid choice there. Yeah, they've lost 181 games over 10 seasons, which is an average of 18.1 per season. Nice. That's nice the kind of maths. maths I can do. Look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Kevin. So we're looking for any club in the Premier League that has lost 100 or more games since the Premier League's inception. Um, I think I'm going to go West Bromwich Albion. West Brom, says Kevin. Let's see how many of our 100 people said West Bromwich Albion. It's right, 39's the high score, 19's the low. You pass the high, 27 is where you end up there, Kevin. 216 defeats for West Brom. Again, 18 a season, exactly the same as Palace, but uh, they've been there a couple more seasons. Thank you very much, Richard. We are halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Well done, Steve. As it should be, the lowest score of the pass is yours. Steve and Pete looking pretty strong on the back of it. 27 is where we find Kevin and Hugh. 39 is where we find Graham and Lynn. A little bit ahead. So, Lynn, a lovely low score from you. Good luck with that in the next pass. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, so, Hugh, remember, we're looking for any football club that has lost over 100 games in the Premier League since the Premier League's inception. OK, there's a few in my head, and it might not be the most obscure, but I'm going to go with Newcastle United. Newcastle United, says Hugh. Here's your red line to give you some sort of guide as to where we stand points-wise. Let's see how close to that you can get with Newcastle United. Is right. Down to 48. <laughs> Takes your total up to 75. Yeah, 340 defeats, so they're also right up the top there, but that's because they've been in the uh, Premier League for 24 seasons. Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Pete. Yes. You've got a target here, <laughs> 55 or less. 
I could be relying on Steve's low score here, if I'm right at all. And I'm going to go for Watford. Watford, says Steve. Here is your red line. There we are, pretty much middle of the column or thereabouts. Let's see if you can get below that with Watford. Well done. Good enough. Oh, easily good enough. Down it goes, 14. <laughs> Lowest score of the round so far, in fact, there, Pete. Very well done. 33 is your total. It's very nicely played. 118 games they have lost in just six seasons. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Lynn, there you are on 39. 35 or less gets you into the head-to-head. -head. OK, I will go for Sunderland. Sunderland, says Lynn. Let's see if that is right. Here is your red line. Can you get below that red line with Sunderland? Let's find out. It's right. Yep, you can. Oh, look at that, 34. 35 you needed. 34 you got. 73 is your total. Very well done indeed. I have to say that was very well manoeuvred by all teams there. It's very impressive stuff. No incorrect answers. Nothing too obvious either. So it was, uh, it was very, very good. Um, no pointless answers. Uh, you won't be surprised to hear. So I'm going to go through the low scores. The best answer you possibly could have given four points Wigan Athletic, six for Swansea City, seven for Wimbledon, eight for Coventry Sydney and Charlton, 10 for Hull City, who lost 101 games, 11 for Stoke, Portsmouth and Middlesbrough. QPR would have got you 12. Sheffield Wednesday, 15. You've got 17 for Birmingham City, Derby County. 20 for Bolton Wanderers. Thank you so much, no one, for saying Fulham. They would have scored you 21 points, though. Would have been a very good answer. 22 for Blackburn and Norwich. I'll take you through the top three. Man United and Man City and Liverpool, not in this top three. I think people were worried perhaps they hadn't lost that many games. But, of course, if you've been in the Premier League for that long, they all have. But the top three are as follows. Arsenal would have scored you 47. Newcastle, unbelievably, are uh, the second high scorers of 48. And quite why Aston Villa are top, I don't know, but they are. 51 points for Aston Villa. It's a sort of Everton sort of answer, isn't it? A team that you know has been there or thereabouts, but doesn't always win all the time. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. We are at the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another pair. Nothing wrong with your answers there, Hugh and Kevin. It is a very, very narrow, narrow field as well. So you did very well, but uh, I'm afraid you've just happened to be our high scorers. Uh, thanks so much for playing, Hugh and Kevin. It's been lovely having you here. Hugh and Kevin. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Very well done, Lynn and Graham, Steve and Pete. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, currently standing at £2,000. <laughs> but here we are in the head-to-head -head round. You start playing as a pair now and the first pair to win two questions in this round will be playing for that jackpot. Richard? It's been impressive, hasn't it, so yeah, far? Yeah, no-one's put a foot wrong. It's, uh, it's good stuff. We've lost two firefighters and one teacher. We have yeah. one firefighter and one teacher remaining. Um, no, but really impressive stuff. Two very different rounds and handled admirably by everybody. Also, newcomers. Newcomers playing oh, with yeah. veterans' ease. Oh, it's amazing. It's like, they were, ease. it's like they were born to it. Yeah, you absolutely. Know when you see ducklings first yes. go into a river, yes. and you think, how do you know how to do that? Uh, it's exactly yeah. like that, isn't it? Just like that. Just like that. Like ducklings, he says. <laughs> uh, best of luck to both pairs of ducklings. Uh, let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Here is your first question, and it concerns Emma Thompson films. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five stills now from Emma Thompson films and the year in which they were released, but what are these films, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five Emma Thompson films, and here they come. A, 2005. B, 1992. C, 2003. D, 1995. And E, 1993. There we are. Now, Lynn and Graham, you're our low scorers, so you get to go first. OK, we'll go for D, Sense and Sensibility. D, Sense and Sensibility, say Lynn and Graham. Now, Stephen Pete, do you fancy talking us through the rest of that board? Mm. 
well, Steve's offered it, it's my specialist subject. Um, I think A is Nanny McPhee, not sure of B. C, I think, is Love Actually. And E, which is the one I think we're going to go for, and I think that's In the Name of the Father. In the Name of the Father, say Pete and Steve for E. So, in the order they were given, Leonard Graham have gone for Sense and Sensibility for D. Let's see how many of our 100 people have got that. It is indeed Sense and Sensibility, and that takes you down quite a long way to 22. <laughs> Steve and Pete, meanwhile, have gone for In the Name of the Father for E. Let's see how many of our 100 people said In the Name of the Father. It's right. And it wins the question for you. Very well done indeed. Down it goes to eight. And it means, Steve and Pete, after one question, you're up 1 0. That's terrific work, Pete. Very well done. It's the best answer on the board there. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for In the Name of the Father at the Oscars, and then Sense and Sensibility, she was nominated for Best Actress, and she won Best Screenplay. Mm. What a career she's had. Amazing. 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 Um, you are right about Nanny McPhee. That would have scored you 70 points, though. You are right about Love Actually as well. That would have scored you 38. Another good answer up here, B. Do you know that Peter's one? Friends. Peter's Friends. Peter's Friends, yeah. And that would have scored 10 points. Well done if you said that at home or in the name of the father. Thank you very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question. Now then, Lynn and Graham, you have to win this one to stay in the game, but Steve and Pete get to answer it first, so good luck with that. Our second question today is all about historical fiction authors. Richard. I'll show you five clues now to authors of historical fiction. We'll give you their initials as well, but who are they? Thanks very much indeed. Let's reveal our five clues. Here they come. Author of a series set in Tudor England that includes The Other Berlin Girl, PG. Yorkshire-born author known for her Regeneration trilogy set during World War I, PB. Author of a series about rifleman Richard Sharp set during the Napoleonic Wars and other conflicts, BC. The first woman to win the Man Booker Prize twice with Wolf Hall and its sequel, HM. And Welsh author of the Century trilogy that begins in the early 20th century, KF. I'll read those all again. Author of a series set in Tudor England that includes The Other Berlin Girl. Yorkshire-born author known for her Regeneration trilogy set during World War I. Author of a series about rifleman Richard Sharp set during the Napoleonic Wars and other conflicts. The first woman to win the Man Booker Prize twice with Wolf Hall and its sequel. And Welsh author of The Century trilogy that begins in the early 20th century. There we are. Stephen Pete, it's over to you. What is it? Uh, we're going to go for the author of uh, Sharp, and we think that's Bernard Cornwell. Bernard Cornwell, say Steve and Pete. Now then, Lynn and Graham, it's over to you. Do you fancy talking us through the rest of that board? Mm, wish we could. I think we only know a couple of women to win the Booker Prize is Hilary Mantel, and the author of The Other Berlin Girl is Philippa, Philippa Gregory. Gregory, that's right. Um, I think we'll go for Philippa Gregory. OK, Philippa Gregory. So we have Bernard Cornwall, we have Philippa Gregory. Stephen Peat went for Bernard Cornwall, the Richard Sharp author. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bernard Cornwall. It's right. It's a good answer. Down there goes 10. 10 for Bernard Cornwall. Meanwhile, Lynn and Graham have gone for Philippa Gregory, the author of The Other Berlin Girl. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Philippa Gregory. Philippa Gregory's right. It's another good answer. Oh, no, it was 13! Oh, 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 that's agonisingly close. But there we are, Stephen Pete. Hats off to you. After only two questions, you are straight through to the final 2 0. I mean, and two good answers the whole show. It's been uh, really, yeah. really high quality, very well played, both teams there. Congratulations, gents. Very nicely done. Shall we fill in the rest of these, do you think? Henry Mantel would not have helped you out because she's actually the biggest scorer on the board. It's a very low scoring board all round because uh, she's the highest scorer with just 19 wow. points. Now, the Regeneration Trilogy. Do you know those books? You would learn. No, absolutely I I brilliant. If you have the chance to go and buy them, go and read them, go to your local independent bookshop, go and buy them now. Pat Barker. Really terrific. Can't think of anyone who wouldn't enjoy them. Seven points for Pat Barker. Now, do you know this last one? This one I do actually know. 
so I've seen it, I haven't read it. Uh, Ken Follett. Ken Follett is the answer. Yeah, I didn't get that at all. It's a pointless answer as well. Very well done if you said that. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Lynn and Graham, are low scorers up to this point. Well, uh, Stephen Peets just played a binder, as did you, I have to say. Two lovely low-scoring answers from you. We'll see you again next time, though. That's nice. Otherwise, it would all have been over in one show, which is just one too few, I think. Uh, but thank you so much, Lynn and Graham. <laughs> but for Stephen Peets, it is now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Steve and Pete. You have seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> Richly deserved. Uh, you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,000. There it is. Well, you played a blinder today. It's been absolutely wonderful to watch. How can you continue this trajectory? What do you want to see come up in this last round? For me, um, something like with a sporting aspect to it. What about yourself, Pete? Oh, well, I'll go for historical authors now. I'll find well, no now you've found your niche. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let's see what comes up on the board. There'll be, there'll be four things as ever. Let's hope one of these doesn't alarm you too much. Elton John, Sporting Tigers, a Star is Born casts word endings. Sporting Tigers, I don't know what that could be. Word endings, I mean, it could be anything. So. Go for that. Yeah. OK, we go for word endings. Word endings it is. Yeah, good luck, gents. We're looking for any word which has its own entry in the British and World English section of OxfordDictionaries.com, please, that ends with the following letters. So any word ending D-U-M, any word ending S-U-M, or any word ending T-U-M. As always, no proper nouns, no hyphenated words. D-U-M, S-U-M, T-U-M. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? OK. I think OK, so. let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. All right. Anything come to mind? Yeah. I think... The bottom one, dictatum. Yeah, it could be. Is there a word addendum? Is there, there is. I think is there's there? a word addendum. Yeah, there is. Oh, I've just gone blank, then, isn't it? Or oh, there is datum. You get a datum line. Yeah. Um, I wish I hadn't picked this one now. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything with some at the end of it. So, first thing that came to mind was addendum, if that is a word. And you think di dictatum? Dictatum. Listen? Or just datum Listen. itself. I don't know. Dictatum, I think. We're going to go. Like so we can only think of three, so maybe there's three. Ten seconds left. Yeah, I'm not coming up with anything at all. No. Oh, it's terrible. But anyway, I think we'll go for those three. That's what I'd say, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, sounds like you've arrived at your three <laughs> just as the minute runs out. What can you give me? First one is dictatum. Dictatum. Is that what you said? Addendum. Addendum. And datum. And datum. Of those three, which is your best shot, do you think, at a pointless answer? I think dictatum, if it's correct. OK, dictatum, famous high women. <laughs> uh, <laughs> least likely to be pointless. Not even sure if addendum's a word, so... <laughs> Addendum. Yeah. And then we put datum, datum in, in the, the middle. middle. Yeah. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, then, and here they are. We've got addendum. Datum and dictatum. Well, they look great on the board from here. <laughs> if one of these turns out to be pointless and wins you that jackpot, what would you like to do with the money? 2,000 quid, Steve. Um, probably go a family holiday. Yeah, take um, my seven grandchildren away with me somewhere. Lovely. <laughs> Very nice. A nice peace and quiet. Very nice indeed. <laughs> uh, Pete, how about you? Uh, I've recently bought a new car and I've found out that the wheels are really, really hard to clean. So I'd like a new set of wheels for that. All right, OK. <laughs> now, Steve and Pete, your first answer was addendum. In this case, we were looking for words ending D-U-M. If addendum is pointless, 2,000 quid is yours. How many people said addendum? Well, it's right. Just has to go all the way down to zero now for you to win that £2,000. Addendum takes us down into single figures nine is where we end up. 
a good answer. Lovely low score. Annoyingly, we only take pointless answers in this round, so we have to move on to your next answer, datum. This is a great word. Let's find out if words ending T-U-M, if in that category this is pointless, you win £2,000. How many people said datum? Again, it's right. Addendum took us down to nine. Datum takes us down into single face passing nine. Still going down with Datum to three. <laughs> OK, now, we go in two directions here. We go into a much more obscure, very much pointless territory, but it could also be into made-up territory. We're not entirely <laughs> sure. Dictatum. Is this a pointless word ending T-U-M for £2,000? How many people said dictatum? Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> well, it sounded good. But I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot, but you do win today's uh, pointless trophy. So very well done. You get that to take home. And memories, I hope, of a, of a game very, very well played. Well done, Stephen. Yeah, Thank it's you. nicely done. No dictator, I'm afraid. Though, though, TUM is actually the place where you're going to find the pointless answers, I think, in this round as I go through them. Um, let's start with D-U-M. Good luck with any of these. You could have had agendum. People might have got corundum, uh, faciendum. Habendum is a pointless answer. It's a legal term in uh, in conveyancing. The big answer is there. Referendum only scored 14. <laughs> really? We, I mean, surely that word's been in the news. Uh, nine for addendum. Dum dum would have scored you three. Popper dum would have scored you three. And memorandum would have scored you two. Uh, let's have a look at words ending sum now, shall we? Add sum, meaning to be present. Check sum. That's a, uh, something to do with data and computers. Uh, passum responsum, that's a response written by a rabbi in the Jewish faith. The biggest scores there, possum, gypsum, opossum, those all score points, but pretty much everything else was pointless. Now, there'll be some answers you could have got here, I suspect, in the TUMs. Arboretum, a park of, of trees, essentially. Dictum, factotum, so I'm your general factotum. Uh, and septum, which, of course, is the, uh, the bit between your nostrils. Another part of the body ending TUM was the highest scorer, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to say what it was. You can, you can work it out for yourself. Quite right. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, Steve and Pete, I'm very sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. That will therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £3,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>